This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. I'm going to give you a stock market update as of Thursday's close for Friday morning. Um, I want to do the market uh, conditions for the S&P. Uh, and that's really the overall market. And then what I wanted to do today is run through a number of different indices and not just focus on the S&P today uh, and just take a quick look at uh, what's going on kind of across the board. So uh, let's go ahead and get into this. Um, uh, let's, again, I'm going to start with the market conditions. And if you notice what's going on here, we had a few negatives, but not many. There were only two negatives, and, but now we're back to zero negatives. And most of this is all neutral now. We only have one positive, but it's a big deal in my opinion. And that's the fact that what I've been talking about here is this weekly average true range is dropping. This, the size of the bars is actually shrinking. That is not typical of what you expect if this was a distribution phase. If we were going through distribution, the size of the bars would actually be getting bigger. So, you know, I, 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 I'm telling you that this one thing is, is – it's not the end-all, be-all, but it is telling us something here. Um, Notice what happened to the daily average true range. It plummeted as we've been pushing higher here. And that is typical. That's what I'll typically see when we start to move higher. Um, again, we're, when we look at average true range going up, that means that the volatility is increasing. When there's high volatility, that's typically signs of distribution. So it's not – again, these are not um, – uh, absolutes, but in general, this is what I would be looking at when I'm looking at these indicators and what they're telling me here. This move back to neutral because the average true range dropped down below its moving average. It's not positive yet because this line needs to roll over. But if we were to do that now, um, that would throw uh, basically uh, these two indicators back to the positive side. And again, it would put the, a, a pretty limited chance that we're getting ready for a big drop. Normally, we will see a um, increase in volatility because they're going through a distribution phase before we see a drop. Now, one of the things I mentioned before is we, when we get this line above here and it's rising, I usually like to see a test of the line and a successful one. And, um, you know, it, it, when it came down here, it's cut down below. Now, if, if the it, volatility increases and this can get right back above without it rolling over, then I would consider this a, a pretty successful test, especially if it can come back up above this high. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see, but, you know, we're pushing up a little bit here and, and the volatility is really drying up. So I'm going to explain why I do think we're getting ready for a significant move in one direction or the other here as we get into um, – the trend in the momentum. Um, in terms of the sentiment, we did pop up a little bit, a little bit more bullish this week. It, actually, the bulls only dr moved up by one, but the difference between the two moved up by uh, from 11 to 14. So what we're looking for now is for this to get up around 20, 21, 22, something like that, and potentially this even working its way up into the f low to mid 50s. And we want this oscillator to get overbought, right? So we would have an overbought reading and people getting too bullish. That's, that's, I think that's the one that makes the most sense at this point. We could continue to oscillate inside of a range without getting this number out of whack in either direction. We don't have, you know, we don't have too much bullishness or too much bearishness. And we haven't had that for quite a while. The last time we had that signal was here and it was a negative 19 at the low. Negative 19. There were 19% more bears than bulls using the investors and sell investors intelligence sentiment numbers. So um, that was a negative 19. I think this was around a negative 18 or 19. Um, and this was actually a plus 21 or plus 22. We haven't reached those levels in quite some time. So we're, we're looking for a signal in one direction or the other. All right, let's go ahead and switch over and let's go into the trend and momentum and start out with um, the spider. And uh, uh, the, the only thing I'll say here is we've got low ADX, low ADX, low ADX, 
Okay, and now the the ADX on the hourly is starting to kick in a little bit. Now, as you guys know, I don't even include this this uh, time frame in the uh, market conditions because it'll whip around so fast. Um, but in this instance, I think it could be important because we have such a low ADX condition on the daily, and we're finally getting a move going on the um, hourly. And if we can get a, maybe a little bit better test of support, it doesn't have to come all the way to the 18, but a little, maybe a little bit more sideways here, and we can lift off that, uh, then you'd have to consider this to be at least on a buy signal from an ADX standpoint. Um, and that could lead to a move up to test these highs. Um, I did a, uh, on Stock Talk, I went through this today. So if you didn't see that, I, I do recommend going and uh, taking a look. We've been caught between the 18 and the 40 here, okay? We've been spending a lot of time in between these lines. It's pretty rare for it to take that much, that long. But you notice these lines are pinching in together. It's not going to take that much longer um, to, to have a resolution here. The other thing that I think is pretty important and is the fact that this ADX has dropped down under 10. Uh, the last time we got down this low, it was basically a major turning point. So I think we need to be prepared for something to happen. It, it really could still go in either direction, just based on the fact that the bears couldn't get anything going to the downside, despite all the bearish news that's come out recently. I'm leaning towards this being a little bit more to the upside. Um, Let's go through the other markets, and that might give you a little bit better idea of how I'm seeing all this. Let's look at the QQQ right now. So this is the strongest short to intermediate term of the indices, okay? The NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100, um, or if you looked at some of the, like the FANG stocks and stuff like that, technology, this, these all look very, very similar. This has a much better look when you look at the weekly chart because we had a declining 18 here, and now it's rising, and we tested it, and now we're bouncing off of it. We've got improving momentum again for the second time in this, in this move. So yes, this could carry a little higher. What's the problem with this move? The problem is, is that we've got a declining 18 month, and can we get through that with positive momentum on the daily and the weekly? We can get through it, no doubt. No doubt we can get through this line. I'm not saying we can't, but do we start a trend from here? I think that's a very, very low probability. I think it's it's possible we'll push through, but then we're probably going to have to back and fill or something like that. It's also possible we'll fail right at this line. The momentum isn't that great. I mean, it's possible we could fail at this line. So we're still looking for resolution, but what I would tell you is right now, this MACD was way, way overdone, all right? And it's worked all the way down to the zero line and it's turning back to the upside. And we've got positive momentum taking place here on the daily chart. And uh, we bounced off the zero line really for the first time. Look at what this has been doing. We've been crossing up and crossing down, crossing up. Now, this time it held the zero line. You know, it, none of these are absolutes, but that's kind of a short term improvement here. So I think we have to respect that. Look at the Dow Jones. Now, the Dow Jones actually has, I think, a better look to the monthly time frame. Look at what's going on. It pushed up, it tried to get through, it couldn't quite do it, but this has done the work that if we can push higher, I think this could carry. This actually had, had could have some upside to it, more so than um, the uh, NASDAQ or the QQQ, but in the short term, this doesn't look very good. This is below a declining 18 week. Do you see this? Now, the good news is we're back to the zero line on the MACD. So we're bouncing off that. I think this is still in a consolidation phase, but it's still bullish. Um, I mean, it still has positive, uh, uh, I would say, uh, positive bias based on what's taking place here um, in the MACD because this is bouncing off just like we were talking about in NASDAQ on the monthly, right? We're bouncing off this uh, zero line, and I think that's a good sign. Um, what we're going to need is a better action on the daily chart. This is, this is moving up. But there's zero momentum. I mean, green isn't even crossing 25, and we got a, a MACD that's well below the zero line. So we're going to need a stronger move like this and then some kind of a pullback. And in the process of doing that, we'll get through the 18-week line. Now, this is the one that really kind of bothers me because if we're getting ready to make a good move, a significant move in the market, the general market, I, it's it's 
I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying it's very rare in my 32 years of doing this of seeing the Russell 2000 lag or actually be sitting near its lows like this and the market's going to take off to the upside. So this is a huge fly in the ointment for the overall market. It makes me question... Uh, and it's my reason for saying that, yeah, we could go up, but I'm not expecting a big up when I look at these other indices. And I can look at this and feel a little bit more confident that the odds of a monster move to the upside right now out of this position is pretty small. Now, we could set ourselves up that way or start to move in that direction and then expand, but we're gonna need to see momentum. If we don't have momentum, and I stick with the spider, if we don't get momentum in some, like the daily chart, I know we've got it on the hourly, but we're gonna have to see it on the daily and really gonna need to see DI kick in on the weekly chart before we're gonna expect anything significant. Um, the dollar, um, obviously just had this monster, monster move over the last few years. It's giving it back in a significant way, significant to, to the degree that I would say, you know, we've come all the way back to this area and it has this look of kind of like a V top where you went up and then gave it all back. So this was the breakout level here. And we've retraced the entire thing. Not only that, we tried to bounce off this level and we've come right back down. That's what this is. Rally up and come back down. Look at the massive overrun of the zero line. So we know this is not going to be in a big hurry to turn back around. Is it a short play? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think there's a huge amount of support underneath. We're coming into this big pool of support. So I think this is going to end up turning into a range, but it probably wants to drop down a little bit closer to 100. Um, now, Crude, what bugs me about crude is that we had this kind of key level where we were watching um, right about here. Uh, let me do that again. Still a little off, but a little closer. Where we undercut it. Now, I don't like that from a momentum standpoint, but we're trying to get back above. So on a smaller time frame, like let's say this is the monthly chart, if this happens on a daily or a weekly, where we get a, high, a, a move like this, it's not gonna really show up on this monthly chart, but we would have some form of an undercut and rally. If that's gonna happen, we're gonna start to see better action in the individual stocks in the uh, energy area. Right now, we're not quite there yet, and ADX on the weekly chart did pop over um, the uh, 25 line. So I, if this is going to recover, it's going to make a pretty strong push and do something like that. That's what we want to be on the lookout for. If we're interested in playing these energy stocks, I think we have to get a little bit more confirmation. Gold, I like what's going on here. Okay, This is your classic undercut pattern, undercut, but a strong and powerful rally. And then we tested the 18 and look at how this popped off the 18. Love that with a pinch play, right? Green DI kind of taken over again. Now, is it going to blow through these highs? I don't, I don't think that's what we're going to see, but this is a very constructive looking overall condition that's developing here. Um, momentum is improving on the daily chart. And uh, I think this is starting to look like kind of like a big basing pattern. So expect some problems up here at 2000. Don't, don't look for this to just explode through there. But the trend and the bias, I think, is to the upside. One of the things, and I'll keep pointing this out, look at what happened. We got way overdone, and then we worked our way back down to zero. You always want to be on the lookout when these are coming down like this and uh, looking for a reversal in some way, shape, or form when that's happening. Okay, uh, the uh, 10 year treasury yields is going through a more severe correction, it looks like. We were, were really extended away from the 18 month line and where it broke out from here. I think this is gonna work its way down a little bit more now that the 18 is declining and we're trying to get back down below both moving averages. I think the MACD wants to work down towards zero. Um, I'm not saying that this isn't gonna look pretty good if it plays out this way. If it comes into the 18 month and this is an orderly pullback and we get a zero line reversal with low ADX, then this could be setting up for another up move in rates. But in the near term, it looks like we might be uh, looking for a little bit more of a pause or a pullback in these uh, in these prices. Uh, lastly, let's look at um, Bitcoin. Again, I covered this in the show today. If you uh, get a chance, go ahead and take a look. Um, so pullback to the 18 and the 40 on the on the um, on the weekly chart. 
And I think that's setting up for a rally to, and well, it's already rallied to in getting, it's probably got a little bit more upside and then it's gonna hit this 18 month line and this price resistance. Remember, we use the higher time frame to kind of frame out what we're looking at. And you can see we came into decent support here and we bounced off that. And now we're coming into the next resistance zone, which is right where this 18 month is gonna be. So I think we could end up channeling here um, we have to watch the momentum in these patterns. These patterns are everywhere right now. If the momentum is strong enough, it can penetrate through these lines, all right? The odds of it starting an entire trend are really small, but we can penetrate those lines if the momentum is good. If the momentum is not good, it'll hit its head, like, you know, it's, it's, it, it'll bounce off that and uh, re get rejected, all right? Uh, so that's the update for the week. Go ahead and post any questions or comments. Thanks.